and back inside District 6 Stadium as the Mustangs score, capping off a minute 34 drive right at the end of the first quarter by a 22-yard touchdown run from Nate Alexander, and then Miranda with the swinging gate, two-point conversion. 12 minutes on the clock in the second quarter as time expired. That was the last play. The scoring drive, the scoring play was the last play. The clock running, which it should not be. Trick will send away the kick, and it will bounce out of bounds. And if the officials catch what should happen, 11.47 shows on the clock, but it should still be at 12 minutes, as the clock shouldn't have started. But the kick out of bounds will place the ball in good position for Northridge. Northridge on their fourth drive, looking to maybe establish a little bit of uh, what they want to be doing tonight, but so far they haven't had any success passing. Uh, 0 for 2 and 1 sack, and the rushing game, other than the one run from Polk, hasn't been there either. Well, so the officials don't catch the clock there as again it runs. Fulton steps back and will fire to the far sideline. As the ball's at the 35-yard line, it will fall incomplete, and it'll be second and ten. Well, you know, sometimes in high school now, when the score gets completely out of hand, uh, the official rule is that the clock runs on a mercy rule. Uh, not trying to say that the Northridge timekeeper is used to that, but uh, this is somewhat different. The I can see where you're going with that, Kevin, as Northridge has given up a ton of points this year. Make no doubts about it. This has been a bad year. Fulton will go under center. He'll hand it off to his running back who comes to this near side, gets across the 36 to the 37, down at the 38-yard line. Stephen Cunningham on the carry. Yeah, they just went around the left side. Got a nice run of four yards, but brings up fourth and or third and six, and Fort Morgan can hold him here and get the ball right back. Oh. A ball resting on this near hash, almost directly in between the 38 and 39 yard line. Northridge will break their huddle. They'll have one man to this near side. Two men flex to the far side and one man in the backfield for Fulton, who's under center. And we'll have a whistle. A timeout will be called by Northridge before the play is... Snapped. This timeout is brought to you by Edwards Wright Price Market and Flowerland, located at 1201 East Platte Avenue in Fort Morgan. Stop by and get what you need to refuel on game days. We'll step aside. 10:43 on the clock. Eight nothing. Mustangs lead. You're listening to Mustang Football on B106 and B106.com. After the timeout, Fulton under center. He'll keep it himself on the option play. We'll pitch to this near side. Cunningham again gets the pitch. He'll cross the 40-yard line down to the 42. He'll be short of the first down, and it'll bring up another fourth down for the Grizzlies. Yeah, Alex, it's kind of a strange night uh, here because I did some scouting of Northridge and wrote down who their stars were and who all their stats were, and this Cunningham kid who's gotten the ball three times already, their leading carrier behind the quarterback, had never touched the ball before. I, I do not have him written down either. Graf gets the punt away. For Hernandez, this punt will go to the far side. Hernandez waiting on this near hash. And it will roll all the way down to the 25-yard line where the Grizzlies will down it there. And Fort Morgan will take over. First and 10, 9.56 on the clock. 8-0, to zero, our score here at District 6 Stadium in Greeley. Fort Morgan coming back out. It would be nice to see him score a couple more and then be able to open up the playbook and try some of the plays that they've wanted to be able to run but may not have had the right game situation for it. So they'll mark it actually at the 26-yard line. Two men spread wide for Martins, who's under center. Two men in the backfield, but one of them, Miranda. Alexander, the deep back. He dots the eye. This time, Alexander will get the pitch. He'll come to this near side. He'll cross the 30, the 35. He'll be ushered out of bounds at the 40-yard line. We'll call that a gain of 14, and it'll be a first down for the Mustangs. He came around that right end and had a linebacker chasing him and a cornerback coming in at an angle, and we had one Fort Morgan kid downfield blocking and, and running interference. 
Goodness. Mustang football brought to you by Platte Valley Hearing Center, 417 Main Street in Fort Morgan, getting your hearing to its very best. The Mustangs and, and the Grizzlies have met three times, and the all-time series is led by the Mustangs 2-1. to one. We'll come back to that thought as Martin's turns, hands the ball off to Miranda, who chokes through the middle of the line and will get five yards of hard, hard yards that time. And it'll be a second and five. Yeah, Miranda, one of the horses of Fort Morgan's offense the past couple of weeks, and that's only his second carry tonight. Back, back to the thought. Northridge does lead the all-time series 2-1. to one, Or check that, Fort Morgan leads the all-time series 2-1, to one, but Northridge has outscored Fort Morgan 69-58 to 58, as there's been two two-point wins for Fort Morgan. As Miranda again gets the ball, dives through the middle of the line, he'll pick up four. It'll be... Oh, they'll give it a three, and it'll be a third and two. But last year, Fort Morgan was shut out by Northridge, a 23-0 to zero loss at Legion Field. So 69-58, to 58, Northridge has outscored Fort Morgan in the three games, even though Fort Morgan holds the edge in the all-time series. Third and two, as Alexander has the ball this time, he'll be met right at the line of scrimmage. And he will have no room to run. Get back to the initial line of scrimmage on the third and two play, and that'll bring up a fourth fourth down right at the 48-yard line. To get the first down, they need a 50. Yeah, with the ball midfield, um, I'm not so sure he wants to go for it. Uh, although I'm thinking the way our defense has been playing, why not? We're at midfield. It's not like we're giving them a gift score by any means. Well, the ball is just shy of the 49-yard line, actually, on this fourth down play. The offense stays on the field. Aaron Anderson flexes wide, as does Chris Pineda to this near side. Miranda in the backfield with Alexander dotting the eye. Martin's under center. They get the jump. Oh, a great play call that time as Fort Morgan goes for the offsides. The hard count from Martins gets Northridge to jump. The official signal is a false start, but it was most definitely an offside play, and that will give Fort Morgan the first down after the five-yard markoff, and that will cross them into Northridge territory. Well-disciplined offensive line and offensive players not uh, jumping with the hard count of their quarterback and tricking Northridge into giving him the five yards. And we will have a timeout on the field here. This timeout brought to you by Edwards Red Price Market and Flowerland, located at 1201 East Platte Avenue in Fort Morgan. Stop by and get what you need to refuel on game days. We'll step aside. 8-0 the score with 7.45 remaining in the first half here at District 6 in Greeley. The Mustangs on top. You're listening to Mustang Football on B106 and B106.com. Mustang Football brought to you by Ackley Building Center, your one-stop center for projects around your home, office, or yard. Ackley Building Center, located at 1402 Mill Street in Brush. The Mustangs, after getting the offside penalty from the Grizzlies, who called that timeout to get themselves back to where they need to be mentally, Jeff Fulton, the head coach here at Northridge. And now we'll have an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty coming out of the timeout. Not sure what that was. Didn't see a flag thrown, but the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty moves the ball 15 more yards. And so Fort Morgan facing that fourth and two back inside their own territory, their own 49, now has the football at the 31-yard line of Northridge territory. Yeah, the Northridge coach was chewing on the ear of one of the officials on the sideline. Possibly he was the one that got called for that. Would be my guess, as Alexander gets the ball this time, he'll come off the near side and will be down after crossing the 30, down to the 26-yard line is where they will spot him. It'll be a second and four. Boy, when you haven't won a game and you're 0-6 and you're in the second quarter, it's a really good Fort Morgan team, only down by eight, and then you give them 20 yards of penalties without any time coming off the clock. That's got to be tough for the Grizzlies. It's a tough one to figure out, but you can see where the woes have come from for this Grizzly teams. Martin's under center will keep it himself. He'll cross the 
25 down to the 20. And that will be good for a first down for the Mustangs. The ball spotted right at the 20-yard line. Yeah, he faked the dive to the fullback and then just turned up field to follow the fullback for a nice gain and a first down. Needed four, got five to get the first down. Now he runs in from the sideline. Mustangs football is brought to you by Central Auto Parts. For all of your auto supply needs, stop by Central Auto Parts at West Platte Avenue in Fort Morgan. The Mustangs will break the huddle. They'll send two men to the far side, two men in the backfield, and a tight end close on the near side here. Martin's under center. The pitch will go to Alexander, who goes around. He takes the edge on the far side, and he will be leveled after crossing the 15-yard line. Down to the 14. A flag came in late from the back judge. We will see what that flag is about as the officials get together in their conference. Yeah, Alexander went around that left side and was just like there was no one there to tackle. The flag is going to be an illegal block in the back against the Mustang. So negate the run from Alexander. The officials will count off the penalty yardage, and we will have a first and 12 now, as it's from the spot of the foul. First mistake for the Fort Morgan Mustangs tonight. Ball at the 22-yard line. Martins keeps it himself and has nowhere to go with it as he's swarmed under immediately. by Eric Ariola. He'll be credited with a sack, and with 5.50 and counting now here in the second quarter, this drive looming large to add to the lead for the Mustangs as they've been moving backwards since getting the gifts in penalties from Northridge. We'll call this a second and 16 play. Now Martins checks, changes the play to his receivers. He Follows the snap and has trouble handing it off to Alexander, who it bounces off his chest, but he's able to fall forward onto it. The 25-yard line is where he falls onto it. And now it will be a third and 16 after the mishandled handoff. Here's where Fort Morgan's going to have to throw the ball up, and uh, it has a strong point of their playbook so far. A beautiful harvest moon starting to come up to the northeast. Wow, that is very orange in its color. That's a great look. And the view we have here from the press box at District 6. Martins fakes the handoff, and now he's looking to pass. He's got a man downfield, and the pass will be broken up. Defended there for Northridge. Jacob Lobato. Fort Morgan's 0-3. Uh, pass tonight, but there's some um, officials' laundry out there, two yellow flags. And it looks like they're conferring with the Northridge sideline to see what they want to do. We have a hold, which will be declined, and that will bring up the fourth down play. This is an odd spot for any high school team, really, with uh, the kicker. This is, would be an incredibly long field goal to attempt, but it's Incredibly hard to get the 16 yards that you need on the fourth down play. So the Mustangs will go for it. Martins drops back to pass. He has a man open down the middle. He elects to go to the sideline where the pass is caught and into the end zone for the touchdown as Martins connects for the touchdown with Michael Fitzsimmons. It is fourth catch on the air and second touchdown catch. Yeah, that was a really nice toss. That Simmons was right behind the defender. The defender, if he would have looked, would have been able to knock it down. But he was all he was doing was looking at Fitzsimmons Simmons on the last minute. Fitzsimmons Simmons goes up, grabs the ball, and falls into the end zone. Again, we see the swinging gate formation as this time they will snap it to the middleman, who is Martins, and he will scamper into the end zone as Northridge has no idea how to defend the swinging gate play. 
A little bit of old school trickery from Harrison Chisholm and the Mustangs as the score moves now to 16 to nothing. The Mustangs on top with 428 remaining here in the first half. We'll step aside. You're listening to Mustang Football on B106 and B106.com. The Mustangs cap a five and a half minute drive with a 26 yard pass. Martins to Fitzsimmons. Martins tacks on the two point conversion and they lead now. 16-0. Frick approaches the ball at the 40-yard line. We'll kick it away, and it'll be fielded at the 11-yard line. Can we see the trick coming from Northridge as the man who has it goes to the far sideline. He'll be drugged down as he gets to the 44-yard line. So just like Northridge can't defend the swing he play from Fort Morgan, Fort Morgan has no idea how to defend the kickoff return play out of Northridge, and this is the second time that Northridge will have really good field position starting a drive. Yeah, that's kind of strange because Fort Morgan at the beginning of the season, first couple games, that's the play that they ran every time the ball's kicked to them. The old, whoever gets the ball turns around and has several people go by him. You think in practice that they practice to get that. It gets that. We'll see Fulton go back to work for Northridge as he's under center. He'll bring his man in motion. That's Blake Carlin, one of the receivers. The give will go, no, he'll fake it and take the option to this near side. He gets away from a few Morgan tacklers, and he'll be tripped up finally as he gets down to the 31-yard line. A big game that time for Robert Fulton as he's able to get the first down. Yeah, that was a beautiful run. He broke a couple tackles. Fort Morgan kind of trying to arm tackle him. They need to wrap up. Northridge gets back in this with a touchdown and a defensive stand. 26-yard gain that time for Fulton on the ground as they're able to break into Fort Morgan territory are the Grizzlies. Fulton again will go under center. He has two men in the backfield flanking him. He's looking to pass. He'll throw to that far side. Uh, the pass will be caught. Jordan Francis. He will have the catch with a gain of two, and it'll be a second and eight. Nice little swing pass out of the backfield into the right flat, uh, but only a gain of two. Sport Morgan really needs to get a good defensive stand here. Well, spot the ball just inside the 30-yard line for Northridge as they are looking to score with three minutes and ten seconds remaining here in this first half. Fulton again goes under center. will bring his man in motion from the near side here. This time the kid will go, and now he fumbles the football as he tries to pitch, run the option play, but it was disrupted that time. Brandon Hoffman getting into the backfield and disrupting the option play. That will move the ball all the way back to the 42-yard line of Mustang territory. Once again, Northrop's kind of self-destructing on that play. You know, an ill-advised pitch, and they went behind the running back. Poor Morgan there. Uh, the kid did a good job just getting on top of it. And it is third in a country mile as the Grizzlies need the 20-yard line to get the first down. They'll pass the ball, and it'll come to this near side. Carlin with the catch, but he is immediately tackled by Miranda after only gaining a few yards, and that'll bring up a fourth down play. Yeah, fourth and 17, get into that position where if you punch, you might gain 10, 15 yards. So maybe you try it, although fourth and 17 is pretty tough to pick up. We saw in the last long yardage play that Northridge had in the first quarter, they ran the delayed handoff. Not doing that here as Fulton was in the shotgun. He looks to throw the ball to the far sideline. The closest man there is a Morgan defender. He catches it inbounds. I believe Cody Davis with the interception, if it is, and it is, that is his second interception on the year, an ill-advised throw that time by Fulton as he was swarmed under, and he is coming off gingerly to the sideline. More importantly, the Mustangs take over deep in their own territory with a minute 42 remaining here in the first half. Absolutely. He was about ready to get creamed, and he just leaned back on his back heels and threw that ball up like a lame duck. Uh, Fort Morgan, uh, Defender back there to get that. So Martins will go to work with under two minutes remaining here in the second half, or check that, the first half, second quarter. 
He will pitch to Alexander, who will start to his near side, go back to the far side, and he's got room to run along the far sideline. He'll get across the 35, down to about the 40. A flag comes in late, and I think there should have been one as he got tackled well out of bounds. Yeah, that was a big hit. Carried him quite a ways out of bounds. From this vantage point, I couldn't see whether it was out of bounds or not, but uh, obviously the official was right there to make the call. So the Mustangs started this drive on the 18-yard line. The big run from Alexander might be aided with the personal foul penalty, depending on what the call is. It is a personal foul, and it is against Northridge, so the late hit penalty tacked on to the already big run will put Fort Morgan into Northridge territory across the 50 down to the 46 is where the official will spot the ball. So a huge change of events now with a minute 23 showing. The Mustangs are really within striking distance here as they break into Grizzly territory. Absolutely. It would be nice to see them pick up another seven points. Or eight as they've been going about it. Alexander gets the give again this time. He'll run off tackle to this near side. He'll cross the 45, be down to the 42-yard line. Yeah, with a minute seven left, I think Fort Morgan's going to have to either use their timeouts or go to the air. The clock dips under a minute now, and Fort Morgan not really looking to rush things here. Still having all three of their timeouts. All spotted at the 42. The give goes to Miranda, who goes in through the middle of the line, will pick up a couple yards. And now Fort Morgan will call their first timeout as they're faced with a third and three. 41 seconds on the clock. The Mustangs lead 16-0. We'll keep it here through the timeout. Yeah, Fort Morgan probably huddling, trying to come up with a strategy, maybe get two plays called here so that if they do get the first down, they can rush up and be ready to go right after uh, the, the clock starts. Yeah, the clock will stop if they get the first down here. So two plays called. You can run two plays essentially before you have to burn another timeout because you will be on the ball by the time, in theory, you'll be on the ball by the time the clock has started again after the first down. Mustang football is brought to you by Morgan Federal Bank, your one-stop shop for all of your banking and investment needs, from checking to savings to IRAs. 321 Ensign Street, Morgan Federal Bank. There's a difference. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Third and three now. The ball spotted at the 39-yard line. Martin's under center. He has a man split each direction. Alexander will get to get in. No, they'll run the reverse as Fitzsimmons gets it. Check that to Schneider, who has it, but a flag is down. He's got a lot of room to run. He gets to the 10 where he'll be brought down inside the 10-yard line, but we have a flag well back at the line of scrimmage. My guess is an illegal block or a hold. Again, another illegal block by Fort Morgan will bring the football all the way back. So negate the big play there as that would have put Fort Morgan in great position to add points before the half. Absolutely. Uh, Christian Mraz. The senior offensive lineman came back into the backfield and tried to get a block that sprung him. I'm not sure that that block was critical, but it turns out to be critical because it was an illegal block and cost Fort Morgan a ton of yards. So Fort Morgan will go all the way back to their own territory. The 49-yard line is where the ball will be spotted. It'll still be third down, but instead of the third and three that was manageable... It'll be 3rd and 15, and the clock runs. The ball will be dropped again by Alexander as he has trouble with the exchange. And I think Fort Morgan will be content to just let the clock run down here and go into halftime ahead 16-0. Five seconds on the clock, and that looks like what is going to happen. So at the end of the first half... Fort Morgan leads 16-0 here at District 6 Stadium over the Northridge Grizzlies. What a squandering of a good opportunity to have that penalty. And then I don't know why Chisholm didn't notice the clock was running, but uh, quite a bit of time just ran away. So when we come back, we'll go through halftime. We'll have stats and analysis here from the first half. 
as the Mustangs lead 16-0 over Northridge. You're listening to Mustang Football on B106 and B106.com. 